Okay. Uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, my name is Rosie Akalo Wellman and I'm an articulation alumna. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey with articulation, the trajectory it set me up on, leading to me to what I'm doing now and where I hope to be going. First of all, I want to say well done and compliment all of the speakers. As however effortless you guys made it look, public speaking is never an easy feat. I remember the first time I stood on an articulation stage well over three years ago, which sounds quite recent, but when I reflect on all that has happened since, feels like a lifetime ago. I remember the knots my stomach was in before I stepped on the stage, feeling the same sensory overload that I'm sure many of you resonate with. A mixture of excitement, nerves, a little bit of imposter syndrome, and maybe pride. Looking back, I think my nerves and imposter syndrome were exaggerated by factors that were very unique to the frantically disorganized dynamic between myself and my art teacher. I remember arriving to participate in the semi-finals of articulation at the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester in 2020 to find that my teacher had forgotten to sign me up to talk. In not signing me up to talk, we'd also not sent in my PowerPoint presentation. I hadn't had the foresight to download it onto a USB, so I remember having a painfully awkward five minutes with Tim, waiting for it to be emailed through using the Whitworths, quite frankly, snail-like Wi-Fi. And to put the cherry on top, I arrived in my school uniform, as my speech is on the art of uniform, and begun to fear that my school of rock approach to embracing my youth may have been a bit silly, as however I tried to frame it, I was a year too young to enter the competition. I just want to say that I recognize the fact that 15-year-old Rosie was an optimistic fool, enabled by my equally optimistically foolish teacher. Yet despite all of this, my speech somehow went down quite well, and I look back on it fondly. Here's a few PowerPoint slides from my presentation. I compared Steve McQueen's year three, Gillian Waring's 60-minute silence, and my own uniform ultimately coming to the conclusion that, to quote from my original speech, uniform can quite easily be viewed as an art form, not just because of the obvious demands it has for some sort of aesthetic awareness as clothing, but also because of the conceptual nature of it. Uniform projects a set of socio-political values, whether they are those of the designers, wearers, or commissioners. This was a seminal day for me, as it not only taught me everything not to do when it comes to entering public speaking competitions, but also marked the moment I caught the art history bug. Prior to entering the competition, like the majority of state school students, I had no formal introduction to art history as a subject, and I'm grateful for that, as it meant that when approaching writing the speech, I had true creative freedom not shackled down by the often elitist and codified laws of art history writing and art criticism. As an organization based around young art historical minds, articulation pushes for innovative and nuanced takes on the subject. A few months later, in April 2020, as a little lockdown project, I entered the age-appropriate version of articulation, submitting a video reflecting on the art historical tropes of the female subject in her bed, or often, when the male gaze is applied, a bed and its woman. I compared Emin's My Bed, Grand Odalisque by Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres, and my own bed. I won this competition and felt further compelled to pursue art history in my education. Despite the fact that I was not offered it as a subject at school, it felt like a multidisciplinary distillation of everything that interested me in school. Fine art, history, English literature, philosophy, theology, sociology, politics, etc. The following academic year, at the beginning of sixth form, I started attending weekly online art history lessons led by Art History Linkup, a really cool group that if you don't know, please familiarize yourself with as it offers free art history lessons and EPQ mentoring for state school students. This was the first time I was formally taught art history, and being part of Art History Link Up pulled me further into the ridiculously small, but equally lovely and supportive young art history community. That same year, I entered articulation a final time. Using what I had been taught in my lessons with AHLU, I gave a talk based around the traditional art historical pose, contraposto. For those of you that don't know what it is, and because it's always nice to stretch a bit, I'd like you to help me recreate the beginning of my speech. 
So, I've always been told that when it comes to public speaking, the first thing you should do is put your audience at ease. So completely ignoring that, could I ask you all to stand? Stand up, guys. <laughs> it's always a, st oh, this is so fast. Usually it takes a like, bit of coaxing. Thank you. Um, in an attempt not to entirely disregard the advice, could you also try to fall into whatever position you find most naturally? You just, yeah, see what settles and feels right. Now, hopefully, you are resting the majority of your weight on one leg. If not, please readjust. Now, shift your weight to the other leg. Maybe take a step forwards or backwards to do this. And can you return that weight to the first leg? And back again to the second leg? And one final time to the first leg. You're all right to sit down now, I'm done. <laughs> Contrary to what you may be thinking, I was not just doing that in order to work out how long I could get a room full of strangers and a few friends to take instructions from me with no explanation, but instead, I was getting you all to recreate Bruce Nauman's video artwork titled Walk with Contraposto, made in 1968. For this speech, I spoke about the rich history of this deceivingly benign and static pose and how it is undeniably aligned with traditional Western patriarchal power hierarchies, referencing Michelangelo's 16th century sculpture David and Thomas J. Price's 2020 Reaching Out. I sent this speech to a range of people, eventually getting it published in the art journal Cultural Bulletin and also leading to me getting some work experience at artist Thomas J. Price's studio. Throughout year 12, I continued doing Art History Link Up, completing an EPQ based around the morality of prostitution in late 19th century Paris and how art can be used to explore that with a focus on Henry Gavex's 1878 painting Rolla and Alfred de Musette's earlier poem Rolla. This is just one example of how my passion for art history continued to manifest in a multitude of different ways. In the summer of 2021, Manchester International Festival commissioned me to write an article about Lord Prevost's work with Manchester Jewish Museum. I then went on to do work experience with Art UK, an organization which aims to democratize access to art through digitizing every public art collection in the UK. Again, check it out. They have really cool competitions to get involved in. Um, over the next summer, I made a podcast for the National Football Museum about the history of women's football for the lead up to the Euros. Uh, and Articulation went on to ask me to give a talk for the Association for Art History's Ways of Seeing conference in 2022. Following this long list, this was just one of the many professional paid opportunities that being part of the alumni network has offered me. Most recently, Articulation invited me to film two videos for the National Gallery's YouTube channel and for gallery members on framing. I looked into Titian's 16th century portrait of Joao Lomo and the frame it's paired with, was given a chance to explore the framing workshop and pick Peter Shady, the head of framing's brain, on what happens behind the scenes, and was even given a chance to help carve a frame for a Parmigianino work. So I can confidently say that even though my work has yet to make it to the gallery, my hand has left its mark. Now, we've got a clip to show you, which is a little preview. The actual film's coming out in a couple of weeks, but here's an edit of the interview. Why do you think it is, though, that people are so focused on making sure that paintings are as well preserved as possible and look almost as they did like the day they were painted, but frames, it's not the same? There's no science to it. Right? Yeah. There's, no, there's no right or wrong, if you want. It's kind of like those videos about how they distress denim jeans to make it look like they've been worn for years <laughs> and years. <laughs> when you frame things, you often notice the edge of paintings more than often a good frame will, 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 will suddenly bring the edge of the painting out and something that nobody's ever seen will, will suddenly become visible in a different frame. Wait, so outside of the National Gallery, who's got particularly good frames? <laughs> Wait, what's this one over here? I've kind of just seen like big and gold and I'm there, like, what is going that, that, on with this frame? That, oh, that's, that's, that's something I made. It's, it's, um, it's the frame for, for Painting by Matteo Giovanni, which is in conservation at the moment. It's 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 um, it's a painting with this funny shape at the top. Yeah. And, and I, I researched it at the time, and and 
all these paintings with these kind of shapes at the top have this kind of flame-like ornament. So I actually made this for an exhibition. Do you think the frame could also just be shown in its own right, though? It could be, yes. But, yeah. Is that... Because it's not really a done thing, but in the end, kind of going to the studio and seeing all of the work that goes into the frames, and it's such a technical thing, but there's also so much, like, art history that's feeding into it, and so much general aesthetic awareness that frames are pieces of art in their own right, I'd like to argue. Yes, but, yeah, yeah, we did have one exhibition of frames seven years ago. Um, so it has been done, but it's... Yeah. it's the, the, the gallery is so much, or the, the museum's academic art history is so much focused on, on, on the images, and quite often in, in, in books, even original frames are cropped out because people just look at, look at um, images rather than, and, and often the idea that these are three-dimensional objects gets lost in that a little bit. I didn't expect to be doing this today. <laughs> just push, just try to... Yeah. And that, and then until, until you come to that line, <laughs> you can just peel that off. Nothing can go wrong. If, 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 if you can just glue a new piece in if it's a complete disaster. And not yeah, to don't put your, touch this don't put your, this, is, oh. this is very sharp, but you can, but you can, you can. You can so I just get like. Yeah. This is the beginning of my framing career. <laughs> um, we had a lot of fun that day. Um, and finally, at the moment, I'm doing a fine art foundation at Central St. Martins to give myself a chance to explore my practice as an artist and to improve my understanding of art history, approaching my writing as a creative in my own right, rather than an academic looking in from the outside. Next year, I'm going to study art history at Trinity College, Cambridge, where I'll get time to further explore my current passions like abstract expressionism and institutional critique based performance art. After all of that, I don't really have a fixed idea of what I'm going to do, but I'm leaning towards the vague goal of aiming to be some sort of art history Mary Bird, dabbling in academia, documentary writing, documentary making and writing. I'll just have to wait and see. All I really know is that art history will be involved, with my goal being spreading art history education to state schools. As I believe that in this increasingly visual world, there is no subject more important or more relevant than this. At this point, I can't really tell whether art history won't stop following me or if I won't stop following it. And without wanting to sound too gushy, all I can really say is thank you to Articulation for putting me on this path. I can't wait to see what you finalists all get up to after this. And believe me, the art history world really is that small, so I'm sure we'll be seeing each other very soon. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a lovely day, and congratulations one final time to the speakers.